Getty The campaign of Roy Moore, an accused child predator, running to replace Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III in the Senate, is an X-ray into the heart of the conservative movement. This movement is not a principled desire for smaller government, nor a worldview based in the moral framework of Christianity. It is an exercise in protecting white identity, where anything is acceptable, even accusations of UAL misconduct from eight different women, as long as your side wins. If you keep a liberal Democrat out of office, and you shore up your Senate majority, you can justify electing a man who one woman said brought her to his house and tried to get her to touch his genitals when he was in his 30s and she was 14 years old. Advertisement continue reading below this has been revealed in part through Moore's Most Public Defenders, a group that includes the President of the United States and the campaign staff who have stuck with the man they still call judge, even though he was thrown out of office twice for disregarding the rulings of higher courts. That last group includes Dean Young, Moore's chief political strategist, who had the following to say at a press conference Sunday. Young's argument here is straightforward. Yes, he says they believe more over the eight women who have accused him of UAL misconduct. Yes, he dismisses the dark menu of allegations against Morris Jerry Springer stuff. But those details almost seem secondary. The core argument is that a liberal Democrat must be kept out of office at all costs, even if the cost is an indelible stain on the moral fabric of the nation. Advertisement continue reading below the idea that Alabamians would be making a principled decision in voting for more, so he can help Donald Trump pass tax reform and build the wall, is beyond parody. The man is an alleged pedophile, but it's worth sending him to the nation's highest legislative body so that he can enshrine our budding plutocracy in the tax code and build a wall along Alabama's southern border to keep illegal immigrants out. As a refresher, Alabama is not a border state. But its conservative residents seem very enthusiastic about the wall. Why would that be? Could it be that the wall is a symbol of something, say, a reinstatement of racial power dynamics from a bygone era? Young is not the only one to take this tact. Alabama's Republican governor, Kay Ivey, essentially said last week that she believes Moore's accusers, that is, she believes he is a child predator, but that she will vote for him anyway so he can help install conservative judges in the federal court system. President probably person of the year backed Moore on the basis that, yeah, he doesn't believe Moore's accusers, but more importantly, his opponent is a Democrat. I am showing you how different networks are reporting on this. The good news, they are pivot NBC Trump on. Roy Moore UAL misconduct allegations, he totally denies it, but you have to listen to him also. Pick.twitter.com JID 631 SLRX1, United States Patriot 247, United States at Trump Train 45 Pack November 21, 2017 It is beyond dispute that Doug Jones, Moore's Democratic opponent, is qualified and has a sterling record as a prosecutor. The idea he is soft on crime is laughable. But in sad fact, the specifics of that record might hurt him in Alabama Jones convicted the remaining Ku Klux Klan members who, in an act of domestic terrorism, bombed a church in Birmingham during the Civil Rights Movement, killing four little girls attending Sunday school. That makes Jones one of those who is trying to upend the traditional order in Alabama. It makes him an ally of the other, whose agenda must be opposed by constructing the wall, and, as Mr. Young reminded us, by repealing Obamacare, a nickname for the Affordable Care Act that was always a dog whistle to the Republican base. It doesn't matter what Moore is accused of, he's on the right team. Jones is on the wrong team. Young, and Donald Trump, and Moore's other defenders, are hoping that's enough to get him over the line. The White House has since said Trump won campaign for Moore in Alabama, but he has already, for all intents and purposes, endorsed him. This is similar to Paul Ryan's non-endorsement endorsement of Trump during the 2016 election, in that it is a completely empty gesture. Advertisement continue reading below Advertisement continue reading below Getty This does not have to be the next chapter for the conservative movement. Things do not need to culminate with a Republican electorate driving a man to the United States Senate who was banned from the local mall because he was creeping around, hitting on Santa's helpers. Republicans do not need to elevate someone whom a local police officer said she was told to keep away from the cheerleaders at high school football games. They do not need to cast their votes for a man who readily admits he found his wife eight years after ogling her at a teen dance recital when she was 15 years old, or who told Sean Hannity he always dated girls with their mother's permission, a claim that tells you all you need to know, but which still isnt true. Advertisement continue reading below truly principled Republicans and conservatives can take a stand. Increasingly, it looks like that will be up to conservative women, according to the Washington Post. Recent polling suggests that, among women, Jones is making gains. 
In a Fox News Channel survey released after most of the accusers went public, Jones had an eight-point lead over Moore, based largely on a surge with female voters. The percentage of women in the state who had a favorable view of Moore dropped 11 points between mid-October and mid-November, from 47% to 36% among men, Moore dropped by just two points. Two points. That's all that accusations he's a child predator cost more among the men of Alabama. After the Washington Post uncovered the first four allegations against Moore and corroborated those accounts with 30 other sources in the community, nearly 40 percent of Alabama evangelical Christians said they were more likely to vote for him. One Alabama Republican official likened a 32-year-old Moore's pursuit of a 14-year-old girl to the biblical story of Joseph and Mary. There remains a danger that, like Donald Trump, Roy Moore represents the ultimate, intoxicating potency of white supremacy that a white man who is blatantly, grotesquely unqualified for the office he seeks can still triumph over the other. Doug Jones supports a woman's right to choose, which conservatives see as endangering unborn children. Will they support endangering born children just to taste a poisonous victory?